r slash ask reddit what's a cool fact about the human body that a lot of people don't know we are by cell numbers more bacteria than human some people will cough if they put something in one ear a very small percentage will cough if something is in either ear it is called donald's ear cough reflex I always cough when I q-tip out my ears. I thought that happened for everyone. When I swab it out I can feel the tickle way deep in my throat. If you squeeze your left thumb it suppresses your gag reflex just a little bit. I found that out recently. I do that trick when I'm brushing my tongue. I'm going to use it, but for other reasons. The human body contains enough fat to make 7 bars of soap. Only 7? Casuals. My body can make at least 15. Only double digits? Cute. The small area between your eyebrows is your glabella. So someone with a mana brow is glabellalous? Your heart rate increases about a minute before partaking in exercise. It is known as the anticipatory rise and happens involuntarily. This is absolutely fascinating because I've learned about something called anticipated compensatory conditioned response and that's quite literally the opposite of that. It's so cool seeing how your body can automatically perform two opposite counteractions in their appropriate times. The optimal human circadian rhythm is actually closer to 25 hours than 24. Just a couple hundred million years till the planet slows down to match our sleep cycle. You mostly breathe out of one nostril at a time, and the dominant nostril switches every hour or so. Wait so this is normal? Well damn I just thought I always had some level of cold. Vitality. You'd be surprised how much blood you can lose and fully recover reasonably quickly. If it drops below a certain threshold, even if replaced fast, you'll appear to recover for a few hours then die of multiple organ failure. Your hands and feet alone account for more than half of all the bones in your body 106 stroke 206. Go to point out you're including the wrists and ankles in that count. Apparently some peoples in Asia have a bunch of DNA from Denisovians, another hominid people coexisted and interbred with. Any special traits they've got from that, and which Asians have the most of this? The mouth and anus are both continuous with the external environment, and so is your GI tract. This means that from an anatomical point of view, food you've swallowed is still outside you. Does this mean humans are technically donut shaped? You bet it does. Most of our body never gets more than 20 years old. Our cells divide, in a process called mitosis, and then die. The oldest organ in your body is the lungs. In terms of age of your cells, your skin never gets more than a few weeks old. Your mouth never gets more than a few days old. Essentially, the reason we age is not because the cells are old, but they lose their ability to perform functions as effectively as they go through the mostly genetically determined aging process. Your cells are only designed to divide a set number of times. It's due to structures called telomeres. It's a little more complicated than this, but I'm not writing a textbook, nor am I qualified to do so. Pacemaker cells in the heart never die, cause if they do then so do you. Cutting the corpus callosum, connects two brain hemispheres, can produce some freaky results. Such as your hand doing shit that your conscious mind is too aware of, writing a sentence or scratching in it without knowing for instance. I saw a program back in the dark ages when I was a kid, it was all about the brain. One of the things they talked about was that procedure. They had a guy they were testing. One hand did better with creative things, the other did better with logic. At one point they were trying to get him to do something with the hand that didn't have an easier time with it. I think it was something like stacking blocks. He wasn't supposed to use the hand that could do it better. But as if the hand had a mind of its own it kept interjection itself and at one point literally grabbed the hand having a problem and moved it out of the way in obvious frustration. My son has hyperplasia of the corpus callosum and even since he was a baby, he's 11 now, when he tries to grasp something or use his hands for anything he will immobilize one arm to use the other. In therapy we worked on getting him to use both hands together but while one hand might be reaching for a toy, the other hand would knock the toy off his table or throw it. He would get so frustrated and start yelling, he is non-verbal, and flailing both arms around. We have to be careful to keep an eye on him because another thing that goes with this defect is he has a high tolerance for pain. 
so he might wedge one arm between his wheelchair armrests so hard that it's cutting off the circulation but not show any signs of discomfort. He has a medical bed with tall wooden slats around it and he will stick one arm through a slot and get it stuck on purpose. Sometimes I think he would prefer to amputate arm and is actively attempting to kill the mischievous arm. Brains are weird. We have an internal regulator that prevents us from using our full strength. Or muscles usually only work at about 60% max of what we are capable of. In extreme life and death situations these regulators stop and we are able to use our full strength. This is how the parts where people tipped over cars and similar come from. These regulators are because at full strength we heavily damage our bodies. Essentially, you could lift something to the point where it is either lifted or your arm just breaks instead. I believe there has also been someone who ran so hard his leg broke. The war that's constantly happening inside of you. Everyone knows about your immune system but the sheer complexity of it is amazing. Like, your body has neutrophils which are like the generic white blood cell that constantly goes around your blood vessels seeking out foreign objects. But did you know there are cells called macrophages which are like way better neutrophils and the fact that neutrophils mostly swallow bacteria to kill them. Macrophages do this too except they can swallow close to 100. You have stuff like dendritic cells whose main goal is to be an early warning system. They swallow an invader then carry a piece of it back to T cells to activate them. Once they're activated, T cells swarm that specific invader and kill anything that has that antigen. I didn't even name close to all of the cells that are doing constant battle inside of you 2 4 7 3 6 5 days a year. So next time you have the flu or an infection, think of the little guys inside you who gladly fight the good fight. Yep, cells at work taught me a lot of things. When we get sunburn, that's not the heat of the sun that's hurting us most of the time. But it's little skin cells killing themselves to protect us from skin cancer. Not so cool if I think about it. After watching cells at work, this makes me panic a little. I'm so sorry, little cells. You have enough potassium in your body to create a very small bomb. Babies are born without kneecaps. They develop around 2 years edit. They have a cartilage like thing that protects the knees. I've been told so many times that there's still something. Thanks, gonna go punch a baby in the knee now. The human head weighs about as much as a bowling ball. Don't bowling balls come in different weights? Yay but humans come in different stupids. So I guess it all evens out in the end. Eyes color isn't strictly based on recessive dominant. That's a major incorrect oversimplification. Scientific name for your thumb is Pollux and your big toe is Hallux. Not just yours. Everybody's. Not mine. Mine is named Mr. Thumbness. Mine is named Dave. Eye immune privilege. Your immune system doesn't know your eyes exist. There's a chance that if you get an eye injury or an infection near your eyes the immune system will think your eyes are a foreign body and you'll go blind. You're taller in the morning than the rest of the day night. Some people are born with extra ribs called cervical ribs which grow from the C7 vertebrae in the neck. It's a weird and rare mutation that a lot of people don't even know they have. Although it is also a cause of thoracic outlet syndrome. Which is where pressure is applied to the nerves, veins and arteries running into the arms. It can be really painful, and in some rare cases can cause gangrene in the arms. If left untreated it can kill you if you're really unlucky. Source. I have the non-cervical rib induced variety. Women are actually programmed to forget the pain of childbirth after a few months or so. If this didn't happen, most women would only end up having one child, which would eventually lower the population. It's all those goddamn hormones. I vividly remember how awful contractions were. It's like a charley horse around your entire torso. Every few minutes, you can't make it stop. And once it eases up you know it's just going to happen again and again and again. And I remember thinking as I pushed this melon headed baby out of my vagina that I'd rather have the contractions. Those weren't as painful. But I don't actually remember the pain of the birth itself. It's so weird. Your tongue doesn't fit properly in your mouth and you're basically swallowing it. Thanks. I hate it. I hope you see your nose for the next 4 hours. The reason for fevers is to make your body temperature rise to kill whatever virus your body is fighting. When your white blood cells have done their job, you sweat to cool off. 
hence your fever breaking. Edited to add, I am not a doctor. At some point you need to take a fever reducing medication. A really high fever is dangerous. You think you see everything in a certain area, but you have quite a few blind spots your brain will just have you not see. Edit. I have nothing to edit in here. There is a muscle, called palmaris longus, in the forearm missing in about 10% of the population. You can easy test if you have it by putting your pinky and thumb together, while holding your palm facing up, and flex the hand upwards. If one tendon is standing out more than the others that's palmaris longus. You can see your nose all the time, your brain just chooses to ignore it. If we were an RPG character, our main stat would be endurance. We are, by animal standards, hellishly undying and unrelenting terrors. These terminator-esque nightmares that just do, not, stop. So ancestrally we are persistence hunters. That is, our main tactic for catching prey without fancy weapons was to just run them down. Especially in our way back home of the African desert. You can still see it, all over the human body. We are nearly hairless. This lack of insulation means better heat dissipation. We have a ton of sweat glands, next to other mammals. Again, heat dissipation. Another one is our two-legged gait. Walking for us is technically just a series of controlled falls. We let gravity do half the work, and as a result use up fewer resources and generate less heat. Quadrupeds, on the other hand, have to do more work with more legs. I mean, imagine being a more or less gazelle of half a million years ago. You're eating, doing your thing when this predator arrives. So you run off. Now most predators, they'll only chase for a short distance and then call it a day. Watch cats, for instance. But this one, here he is again. So you run, he returns. You run again, he returns. You're getting hot, you have to stop and pan to lose heat. But he just keeps jogging. You run, he keeps coming. You're tired, you're fast, but not for very long and this stretches your limits. Eventually you just lay there, exhausted and heat stunned, and this ludicrous hairless monkey just jogs on over and kills you. That's our claws, our sharp teeth. Even without our technology and tool making, we simply don't stop. Edit. Dang. I went and did something frivolous like go to bed and this got popular. Right. The popular complaints. I did ignore it. I guess I took the phrase human body in the question a little too literally. Humans would first and foremost be intelligent social animals. And my source. In all honesty, I started with Born to Run. It looks like there is some element of debate on this point. But this is real debate, not vaccines cause autism style debate. There's been some proper study on the topic. And I found some papers on the topic, like this one. But yeah, I focused on this because it's not so common knowledge as our tools and intelligence. And still pretty cool. The femur is stronger than steel and concrete. 